Okay, we're recording. Go ahead. Okay. So good morning. I'm calling to order the GOL meeting today, May 25th at 9.01 a.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. And I'll call on the other members to make sure that we can all hear and be heard. So Jennifer? Present. Thank you. Pat? Present. Thank you. Mandy? Present. Okay, I'm hearing everyone and Michelle is not with us this morning. Okay, so we're going to start the day with the, uh, the Race Amity Day Proclamation. Uh, joining us, we have Council President Lynn Reismer and Community Sponsor, Mr. Ash Hartwell. Um, Athena, would you please let Lynn and Ash into the room? I don't see Ash in the attendees list. Marcy is there and she's probably there as direct from the League of Women Voters. And if we have any other uh, community sponsors with us, if you could please raise your hand so we can include you as well. And Mandy, would I be able to ask you to pull up the proclamation? I was gonna ask you that. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning. Okay. Uh, let me just try to change my view so I can see everyone. Good morning, Marcy. Hi, good morning. I just wanted to say I'm not really um, the intention was not for me to be the spokesperson or on the program at all, but until Ash comes, I'm happy to, to stand in for him. Um, but this is his thing. So if he comes, I'll, I'll, I'll leave. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So we are looking for clarity, consistency, and actionability. Um, and if we would, um, Lynn, uh, would you like to say a few words? Um, yes, first of, uh, thank you, first of all, for all your work. Um, and I really appreciate the edits that have already been added to this. Um, this is a proclamation that we have done, uh, I believe, every year. We may have missed last year, I hope not. Um, more importantly, I did compare this proclamation with proclamations in the past, and I believe it is the second and third paragraph, maybe the fourth, that are different from other years, and I just wanted to point that out to you. Other than that, uh, this is a very important event for our town and is consistent with many of the things that we're seeing now as progress towards um, the whole area of uh, racial equity and inclusion. Thank you. So if we would like to begin with the, oh, Mandy. Uh, no, I was, if we're ready to begin, I'll just talk about what you're seeing on the screen. Thank you. Um, so this is, this is my draft changes. And so I like to go through them since I'm the one that shares a document. I, I think the R in racial should be capitalized because um, I think they do that as their title. And then I added all the ands at the end of the whereas is. I bolded, there was an S that was not bolded in one of the whereas is. There was a comma right here that um, was missing. Um, and then a comma down here for the Oxford comma and we bold the now therefores. And so I, added a comma at the end of Sunday, a period at the end of the now therefore, and we tend not to say on behalf of the council anymore. Um, and we don't tend to bold that. So those are the changes that you're seeing in red um, here right now. Okay. So uh, will we start with the first whereas and Mandy, take us through. I, I mean, I think we normally just say to the four CRC members, are there any changes in 
you can pick how many whereases you want us to look at at a time. Yeah. Were there any suggestions, questions, changes? I think it looks good. <clears throat> okay. Could it be that we're ready to move to declare uh, the proclamation to be clear, consistent, and actionable? Can I ask one question of the sponsors? Sure. Um, do we know whether there's going to be some sort of event on Sunday the 12th that should be mentioned in the now therefore? There is an event, but I think some of the details are being worked out still. Unless Marcy, you know what time the event is. Um, first of all, oh, there's Ash. Okay, yeah, did you... he can answer. Sorry. Yeah. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> I am. Yes, there is an event, and um, uh, we're we're still you know filling in the details. Um, but we're we're going to have some perform. It's going to be virtual um, for a variety of reasons. But um, we we seem to be having a new wave of, of COVID. So, um, but we're going to have performance and talks, and we hope that the, the council will um, actually present the uh, proclamation, and we can work out the details of that. But I just want to say a couple of words about this um, first. Thank you all for being here and also for all the work you do in the town. Um, you don't do this for money or for fame. <laughs> I know that, <laughs> but, uh, but I think you do it for amity. <laughs> and a lot of people ask, so what is this amity? What, what do you mean? And I think as you pass this proclamation, it probably is crossing your mind. What, why amity? What, what is it? And uh, just a, a couple of words. You know, what I think it is, is, is race amity isn't about friendship across racial lines. Um, it's really about love and action. It's when you work together for others and for collective well-being. And, and you, in doing that, you're really transcending the prejudice and the hurtful, harmful fiction of race. And, and that's, that's essentially the spirit of, of race amity. And that's what we hope the proclamation um, it conveys and uh, and that it it it, uh, it conveys this idea that to make the kinds of changes in the town that are needed to achieve greater justice and equity and well-being, um, we need both love and amity, and we need justice and equity, and they go together. They can't be. They, they should never be separated. Anyway. That's what I wanted to tell you. <laughs> it's my, my sermon for the morning, <laughs> but uh, I feel deeply about this. And so does Race Amity. And thank you, Marcy, and for being here. And I, I know that Andrea was also gonna join us and a few others, but I'm not sure they made it. Ash, can you tell us what time the event will start on the 12th? It'll be at four o'clock. Okay, so we could add that in Mandy Jo. Okay. And that's a Sunday, not Saturday. It's Sunday. Yeah. It's Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Harpo. How's that language? Good. Good. Excellent. Mandy Jo, thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Ash, are you okay with that? Fine. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm not a voting member here, but yes, it's, it's fine. Your, your, your thoughts are included. If you had any other suggestions or changes, I know you joined a bit late. So um, if you had anything else, any other language that you had an opinion on, please share. No, this is, this is just fine. Thank you. All right. Shall I make a motion? Yes. I move to declare the Race Amity Day Annual Proclamation 2022 
clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Second, DeAngelis. Okay. All right. Let's call on. So, uh, Jennifer. Yes. Pat. Aye. Mandy. Aye. And I am an I. Okay. It's unanimous. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you all for your time, for your work, and for being with us today. And thank you all for the all the work you do <laughs> and all the good that you contribute. Thanks. Thanks. You on the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You are our reasons. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. So I do want to add that we will not be reviewing the bylaw concerning deceptive advertising practices of limited services, uh, limited services pregnancy centers today. Um, we did receive legal review, but it was uh, not too late last evening. So, and to allow for necessary adjustments, um, Anna Devlin Gotcher has asked that we postpone um, that review until the next meeting. Uh, so with that, we can move on to the finance committee appointment recommendations. And I'll ask again for Mandy, if you would please, um, I know we have some questions, the questions to look over, review and um, vote and also move to declare uh, the applicant pool sufficient. Yes, yeah, so we need to do the applicant pool declaration sufficiency first and okay. then the selection guidance. So the order needs to be sufficiency of the applicant pool, then selection guidance, and then interview questions. Okay. All right. So I do know that we have two applicants. And in order to move to declare that sufficient, do we just need a motion and a vote? Uh, do we have questions or discussion first? So we have one, one impending vacancy, correct? Yes. Okay. So I, I guess I'll make the comment that in general, committees have declared pools sufficient when there are double the number of applicants as there are positions open. Um, so in that sense, it's probably a sufficient pool to move on to interviews in my mind, um, even if, the, you know, with two people, what can you say about demographics, right? Um, you know, there's, there's a very small demographic basis to look at. Um, and so can you say those are as diverse as we want or not as diverse? There's two people there. So, um, you know, I, I think I would support moving to declare the pool sufficient myself, but. Yeah, well, we have work to do with outreach, but I, we are grateful for who we have. So uh, do we have a motion to declare the pool sufficient? I'm sorry. So I will move okay. to, no, no, I was gonna make a motion. Oh, thank I you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> no, I was going to uh, make a motion that we uh, declare the pool to be sufficient to proceed with interviews. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, thank you. So we'll call to vote. Uh, Pat? Aye. Thank you. Mandy? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. And I am an aye. Well, that's unanimous. And then we will move on to the uh, selection guidance document. And Mandy, would you? Please pull that. So I think this this is the one that was in the packet. Yeah. Yes. Has everyone had a time to had time to look this over? Were there any questions or suggestions? Mandy, may I ask, are we, do we vote on this again or are we just reviewing this? The policy requires that the committee vote every year to adopt selection guidance. So even if this is, although, here, let me, the, the policy says, 
Um, I think GOL, did GOL, Pat, last year adopt this as standard selection guidance? Yes, we did. Yeah, so, so the policy on selection guidance, the council policy says prior to soliciting statements of interest, developing interview questions or holding interviews, the recommending committee shall by majority vote adopt selection guidance for filling the vacancy and shall provide the document to the full council and all known applicants prior to the deadline for submitting statements of interest. For each multiple member body, the recommending committee may create a standard reference list of skills and characteristics of a successful member of that body and the knowledge and or expertise related to the work. Um, and then it goes on to talk about criteria for a healthy multiple member body. So I don't, reading that, I think even if we create that standard list, which we've done as a GOL, we probably have to vote it every year. Okay. So we're voting to move to council, to pass the council for approval. The council doesn't approve this, it's just the committee that does. Okay. We just have to then send it on to the council at some point. Okay. So do we have a motion to approve? So I move to adopt the standard selection guidance for non-voting members of the finance committee as the selection guidance for the upcoming um, recommendation. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Pat and Mandy. Okay, so uh, Mandy. Hi. Pat. Hi. Jennifer. Hi. And I am an I again. All right, <laughs> moving right along to uh, the interview questions. So this is the one that was in the packet. Um, did you receive other questions? I know I sent you some, but many of them are similar to these. Yes, yes, and um, those were passed as well. And I also had an addition um, from Michelle, which was uh, concerning um, concerning uh, current members. So, is it possible to ask current member a current member about their previous experience, or do all questions need to be identical regardless of experience? So per the policy, um, let me let me put the policy That's up. That's a good question. Yeah, and yeah. so let, let me put the policy up um, because this is something as Pat can attest. Um, I, I have, hold on. Let me see if this works. Um, GOL discussed this a lot and the council discussed this a lot as we were adopting the policy and actually removed um, removed language that would allow follow-up questions and removed language that would have allowed different questions to different um, applicants. Right. And so the short answer to Michelle's question is no. <laughs> and and, and the, the reasoning you know, so the short answer is no, all the applicants have to be asked the same questions and the policy doesn't really allow for follow up questions because the interview questions must be adopted prior to holding interviews. Um, and they have to be asked of all applicants. So that's this first sentence right here in the adopted policy. Um, and so, you know, the policy does not it, it, in some sense, it's silent now, um, but it basically does not allow for any other interview questions or follow-ups um, anymore. And so if we as a committee want to potentially ask questions that might get to a, an applicant's thoughts on their current service, uh, it has to be included in the wording for a question. So the way um, CRC has done that for planning board and ZBA is to sort of put a statement after a question that says, you know, in answering this question, please include all of your experience, you know, or discuss your experience. I think it says, please include any experience you have 
And for these, it's appearing before or serving on planning board or ZBA or watching one of their meetings. So it would be a similar wording for finance. And that's how CRC sort of got around the, well, we want to hear what people have learned if they are serve, have served on the committee. Um, so, you know, I guess that's the long-winded answer for it can kind of be done in a roundabout way. Oh, okay. So there, there is an opportunity. Are there uh, ever exit interviews for members leaving committees? We have not done that in the past. Okay. What a good idea. <laughs> So has everyone had a chance to look over the questions? Any suggestions or comments from anyone? No? So I, I'm trying to pull up the ones I sent you um, so that I can see. Yeah. Um, as I share multiple screens here. Mm -hmm. So I would add to that first question, um, sort of the language I was just talking about. So I'll put it in red over here. The any experience you have with finance in general or the town's finance committee to get towards um, if we end up interviewing or anyone who interviews that's already on the committee, getting them talking about their service on the committee itself. So it's not changing the question, but it's just adding that explanatory language. That's great. Jennifer. I think that's great. Because it, yeah. And then you, because again, I, maybe I brought it up at CRC that um, I have, there have been instances where people found themselves appointed to committees or commissions, boards, and they haven't, you know, really ever been to a meeting. So this kind of gets to that. Mm -hmm. Great. And so I had two other um, questions that I suggested based on, um, again, based on sort of planning board and ZBA interviews. And so what I'm gonna do is add them in so people can see them. Great. Um, just so people can see them. And one of them number, what is now number six, um, this what is your approach to incorporating public input into your decision making um, is something that CRC just added in for the upcoming planning board interviews. I think Jennifer, at your request, hmm. um, you know, in terms of trying to gauge where people are with what they think about public comment. Um, I know, well, Pat's on CRC too. So we've had a long conversation. A so spirited I conversation. On that, um, <laughs> but I thought I'd mention it as a possibility for FinCom, um, especially since FinCom is required to hold public forums and hearings on the budget itself. Um, similar to, I guess, planning board and ZBA that are required to hold hearings that take public comment in. And number five, um, Again, based on a planning board question, interview question, um, and I don't know whether this would be useful or not, but I, I think it would be interesting to hear how people, yeah. you know, think about budgeting and financial matters. Um, so I think it's worth, personally, I think it's worth trying the question out and seeing if it's useful. And if not, then the next time we could drop it. Yeah, I think I agree with you. And I think they should both be in there. I agree too. Some great additions. Thank you, Mandy. Welcome. And then if we're using this language, um, we just have to change this. Yeah. 
Do we have to change the adoption date since we've made changes? Yep. 25, yeah. Do we have, um, is, are there any other, oh, Mandy. Oh, is my hand still up? It's not supposed to be, sorry. <laughs> I can't see my own self when I'm sharing a screen. <laughs> I minimized it so I couldn't see myself. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, do we have a motion to adopt the GOL interview questions for finance committee applicant interviews? So moved. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right, let's do it. Mandy. Aye. Pat. Aye. Jennifer. Aye. Have an aye again. That's unanimous. Okay, so next up, wow, we're moving. So next up we have uh, preservation of structures of historical significance by law, which will be a discussion and vote, which Mandy so graciously has offered to take us through. Give me a second. Thank you, John. <laughs> As I finalize the other thing. So, <laughs> um, oh, I got to get that up. So this is the clean version. Um, this is what CRC voted to recommend the council adopt unanimously. This is the other half of what GOL declared actionable, I guess, the rescission part. This is the other half. I, I, I think this is mostly for Anika's benefit at this point, because Pat and Jennifer and I all sit on CRC, so we've seen this a lot. So this might go I'll really quick. It. <laughs> it made our homework easy for this meeting. <laughs> yeah, really. This might go really quick. So this is the clean version, um, which would be the version we look at. Um, CRC looked at the marked up because